Hello, hello, hello. We have reached 100 subscribers. I am very proud of myself. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. It really means a lot. It helps show that my work is getting out there. And today for my 100 subscriber special, I'm gonna be teaching how to draw a front-facing dragon and a front-facing cat. The person that commented this uh, asked how to draw a front-facing dragon and or a cat. I personally have a lot of trouble with drawing front-facing creatures. I typically draw them from the side. I also have had this problem for a long time, but there was another comment that stood out to me, which was how to draw backgrounds. And I am currently doing a landscape study, and I plan to post a background tutorial once I am finished with that landscape study. So I will teach how to draw backgrounds later. So I don't know how far in the future that will be, but I do plan on doing it. So here is the tutorial. Before we start immediately showing how to draw a creature facing from the front, I should probably see what we already know. So I drew my character, Gemstone, and I drew a picture of my cat next to each other and saw what kind of trends I had. And some common shapes that I saw for the head was a circle, a triangle, and a square slash a rectangle. For the circle, that just kind of shows me where the cranium is going to be of the head. A good reference for doing any types of heads for any animal is finding a animal skull pictures online that will show different angles of it because then you can see the anatomy and how the structure works. Triangle is to map out where the skull is going to be and the rectangle for where the muzzle is. And these always vary in size and I also wrote down some more stuff that I see trending in my cats and dragons. So how now can we use what we already know to change it, to make our dragons and cats face forward? Okay, I apologize for the change in recording quality. I am now recording on my phone instead of my drawing iPad. So now let's see, I'm going to change this color to gray so I am not harming your guys' eyes as much. First, I am going to draw the circles, because that's what I always start with. These circles are not working very well. Let's just use the proper heat sheets. Shh, I did that. I'm just gonna duplicate that because I don't need to make two, because I'm gonna do my cat and I am going to do me, gemstone. And hopefully this doesn't get too boring. <laughs> First, let's start with, I'm going to start with my cat. I'm going to put my cat at the top because I think that drawing dragons, since they have, usually have longer muzzles, I think that's going to be a bit more difficult. Now that I have my circle, I'm going to draw in my triangle. And what I'm doing with this is this area on the triangles, those are where the cheekbones are. That's why I'm not doing triangle this way because then you've got a square jaw. Now I'm going to draw my square for the muzzle. I think I'm going to do it about the width of that triangle and going down to that peak of the triangle. And that seems about right. Usually what I do next is I draw two circles for the eyes. Pretty simple. And now you've got this creepy looking shape. <laughs> Overall, that's kind of the sketch process that I do. But as you can probably see, it does not quite look like a cat. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to duplicate this and see what we can do w later with it for the dragon. For right now, let's start drawing the nose. So the two eyes, I'm going to make a triangle going from that part of the eye down to the peak of the triangle that we did for the jawline. And here we are going to put the nose somewhere. I usually just eyeball it. I don't have any guidelines for this bit. It just kind of takes practice. And also the best thing that you can do is practice and use references. Those two things will really, really help you along your art journey. So now that we got that, I make a little nose bridge because that just kind of usually helps, helps figure out the dimensions of things. 
Now I get to draw the eyes. This is my favorite part. Since it's my cat, I'm going to make her looking quite grumpy because my cat is not a very happy camper. <laughs> She's been very sassy with me recently because I will not let her continuously lick her shoulder because when she licks it too much, she starts to bleed. It's just that time of year where everything gets so dry and cats, my cat at least, keeps licking her shoulder. So we put her in her little sassy sweater when she gives me sass. She looks very unimpressed. And to save time, I'm just gonna duplicate this eyeball. It's not the best thing to do, but I will say that I do it. There's gonna be everyone out there that will be telling you not to do it. And I will say that it is fine because I am also lazy. But still, please don't do it. It's not, it's not good practice. You've got to draw two eyes. But I'm saving time because I want to draw this quickly and not make this video hours and hours long. So now that we have our adorable little grump, we're going. We want to add a mouth. Still doesn't quite look like a cat because all we really have is eyeballs. We're going to draw a mouth. I'm gonna start with two more circles <laughs> to show where her little lips are sometimes even three to show where that bottom chin part is. The chin will just go down to the bottom of the square. Get to draw a little smiley face. Since she's grumpy, I am gonna connect it up here so it doesn't look and make her have a little bit of a frown because she's a little grumpy girly. And now she looks quite grumpy. Along the way, it's definitely okay to- <laughs> that rhymed. Along the way, it's definitely okay to erase these guidelines, because we don't need all of them anymore. Oh, I don't want to erase that. And this nose looks a little wonky, so I'm gonna fix that up. It's always okay to go back, erase and redraw, erase and redraw, because it, it never has to be perfect when you're just practicing, but you always want to be okay. So it kind of looks like she's smiling, which we don't want. Make her look angry. She's an angry kitty. Looks like she's smiling. This is a problem that I usually have. I mostly draw smiling cats. I don't ever draw them when they're facing forward being grumpy. That kind of worked. Just not having it go up there as much. We can just shade that area there. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like a cat. But I think that these eyes need to move down a bit. Again, I'm just moving things around as I see them wrong. It, if you're doing this on paper, then you gotta be a little more careful with it because I should have probably given it early more. Oh my goodness, that makes her look so much more cute. Okay. <laughs> It's funny how just moving the eyes down a little bit, making the forehead bigger, helps a lot making it cuter. Big eyes and a big forehead. Okay. Now I'm gonna start erasing the square here because we don't need her looking like she has a cage on her muzzle. And now something that I think I have the most trouble with is trying to figure out where the outside of the face goes. Because we can't make it like that. I mean, we could. But then it just kind of looks like Squidward. We can't just make it that circle. Because I don't know what that looks like. SpongeBob circle pants. 
So instead, we're my, my cat's very fluffy. If I was doing more of a short-haired cat, I would probably go with a little bit more of that jawline. But for my cat, I she's got a lot of fluff. So for that fluff, I'm gonna mark it out just like that, kind of like a lynx, you know. My cat is a Maine Coon, by the way, if you were wondering. Well, she's a crossbreed between a Maine Coon and something. We don't know what, because she was stray when she was found. That That's kind of a good overall sketch for the outside of that head space that we're doing. And now I'm just going to block in some of that fur that we need. Because she is fluffy. Gonna make her look a little scraggly because she's a little scraggly girl. You can get a lot of different moods by adding different types of fur. Like instead you could make some very nice flowy type fur for a more regal type looking cat. We could just do stuff like that or you can even make curly haired cats which I have seen. Like woo! Okay, now that I'm zoomed out here, I am seeing that this area is too thick and this area is a little bit thinner, but still pretty thick. So I'm just going to go to liquify <laughs> because I think that's just the quickest solution right now. Usually I would redraw it and make it better because I really hate the shape that this is turning into. But right now I don't want to make this too long. <laughs> this should be simple and we aren't focusing on fur. Okay, that's better. And now I'm going to add some ears. What I usually do for the ears is I add a circle from where they start coming out. Later when I draw a dragon, I'll also draw a circle from where the horns are going to come out. But for kitty ears, I'm going to have them facing forward. So, triangles. <laughs> That's what you usually see. <sighs> Nothing new there. But my cat has one folded ear, so we got to make that if you're wondering why her one ear is folded, it's because when she was a kitten, when uh, her old owners had found her, she had frostbite, and now her ears are all scrunky. And she also gets a very infected face when she is stressed or whenever she goes outside. So that's what her little, what I'm drawing now is. It's her little scars and scabs. Overall, she's a very cranky kitty. She doesn't like people very much except for me. She loves me. She only ever hangs out with me and she follows me around like a lost puppy. Every cat's patterns are unique. So if you're trying to draw your cat, it's not gonna look quite like this. Short haired cats, I would, I think I just make this hair a bit shorter. Maybe like that. That side would stop. Do something like that and just ignore that. That's probably what I what I would do for a short haired cat. Both of these are girls, but there's something that I do with the eyes and usually for the muzzles if i'm doing a side profile it's different between females and males since my cat is a girl her she has very thick top eyel eyelids trying to look more like eyelashes or eyeliner even though obviously my cat doesn't wear eyeliner and <laughs> for male eyes if i was to make this a male cat i would not add this I would make that completely flat and I would make this less thick. It would actually make the bottom over here a lot more thick. Because then it gives more of a masculine type look for a cat and for a dragon or pretty much whatever type of animal I am drawing. So this is kind of the gist of what I would do for a front facing cat. And now for a front facing dragon. I think that front facing dragons are harder because their muzzles come out further. So what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to see if I can use this shape that I had before. I'm just going to move this layer down to where this circle was. And I'm going to try and draw a gemstone using these same shapes, the triangle, the circle, and the square. Gemstone has a bit thinner of the tip of the nose, so I'm going to thin that out a little. And that will usually mean that I'm going to draw her eyes further down because we want those circles to be touching there. Gemstone is very rounded. I will say that. Sharper dragons such as Peril, I posted an animation, it's my two videos ago, and it's very good. I think you should see it. I'm very proud of it. I, you should go check that out after this. I'll try to link it in the description. If I don't, I, I'm sorry, I just forget. So now we're going to try to draw gemstone with this creepy little face. For gemstone, I think I'm going to start with the nose rather than the eyes. Well, I think I started with the nose on my cat. I don't know. Gemstone has two nostrils, like most dragons, <laughs> I would assume. And she actually has a little divot, quite like a cat mouth does. But if I were to draw another dragon, I would definitely do that. For now, I think I'm going to go with this shape. That This is what the nose spine on most wings of fire dragons have and it kind of blocks off the eyes so it blocks off here this area so if i were to draw the little half circle that i drew before it would take about like half of that space up but for now if i were to draw the eyes say i'm drawing pale right now she's gonna be angry too because i like angry faces gemstone probably won't be angry to draw peril. Ooh, that was a strange looking eye. Draw peril right now. Probably do something like that. That's very, very quick and very, very not good. So let's go back to drawing gemstone because that's what I want to focus on right now. I'm going to make gemstone having a nice smile. Since I made my other cat, uh, since I made my cat, gemstone is a cat. I'm gonna make, I made my cat unhappy, so I'm gonna make Gemstone quite happy. Look at how happy she looks. Okay, now I'm going to do what I did before with, but this time I'm actually gonna simplify it into two shapes. So I'm gonna have this part of the nose, and this is where if I were to draw my dragon from the side, very interesting looking. This area is right here. And then this up here, which is where I'm gonna draw my next little half oval, is right here. That's how I'm gonna make the two different sections of the nose bridge. I'm drawing my sketch lines very, very dark. Usually I do not do them this dark, and I know it looks kind of creepy and wonky, but it's okay. It'll turn out okay. Hopefully. Usually we can trust in the process. Gemstone is overall pretty soft and overall pretty nice, but she will kill you if you get on her bad side, so don't get on her bad side or she will kill you. That is a very interesting looking eye, but we're gonna go with it anyway. We're just gonna switch this over to... Oh, that didn't work. We are going to copy-paste this one again to save time because I am lazy. Don't be lazy, please. I know I'm gonna be a bad influence here, but it doesn't... You don't need to be lazy to be a good artist. You should not be lazy to be a good artist. Because right now you can definitely tell that I just copy and pasted those, and we don't want you to be able to tell that I copied and pasted those. I'm just going to shade these in quick so you can tell that they're pupils and that she's not cross-eyed. <laughs> Look at how happy she looks. I'm going to erase a bit of these guidelines, at least make them a lot lighter. redraw some bits that we removed 
And now we have our little happy gemstone. Look at how happy she looks. Maybe we should take a few guide, guide, guiders from gemstone because she looks so happy. Here's an airplane going by. I don't know if you can hear it. I erase a bit of this bottom. Okay, and then erase some of this markings that are in by her mouth because we don't need those. We don't need all those scribbles. My art is scribbles, but we don't need all the scribbles. All right, now we got this basic shape again. I think I'm gonna bring back my cat quick. I'm gonna erase this circle. Okay. Gemstone's looking a little tiny in comparison to my cat. Oh, gemstone's probably much, much bigger than my cat. We don't want her picture to be tiny. And. Also, if you couldn't already tell or if you haven't seen like my old, old videos, Gemstone was originally based off of Toothless, so she has a very rectangular, long head. And so in my original vi videos, I straight up made her a Blue Knight Fury, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So, <laughs> but that is my, that is my old, old stuff. She's not based off of Toothless anymore because I want this channel to be original. I'm just going to draw this simple shape. As you can see, this is one of the main differences that I do between my cats and my dragons, such as Gemstone, is I add this rectangle as a guideline for the outside of the head instead of just eyeballing it. Now that we got that, we can actually go in and actually do some of the correct shapes. Then she's going to be happy. This cheek area is going to be out more. If she wasn't as happy, then we wouldn't have this divot and we would have just this be more of a completely flat, rounded shape. But she's happy. And we like that she's happy. Let's all just have a moment and be happy. Just watching me draw. Oh, the eraser. Okay. All right, now that we have that face shape kind of mapped out, we're gonna start adding on some ears. And like I said, I'm also gonna add on where her horns start. And I usually make the horns, at least for gemstone, start about here. And since just gemstone has pretty big ears, they're like that, <laughs> we gotta make them curve up and behind, which can be difficult a lot of the times. And also, I think gemstone looks a little too cheeky for, for me right now. So I'm gonna use my liquify tool again and make her a little less cheeky. You know, making her look a little bit less happy, but you know, that's okay. Have our two horns start about there. And something really important while drawing dragon horns is I'm also just gonna, you know, is that you don't want them to start way back here. 
you want them to start closer up here because they have to balance. If the horns are going to be way back here and they're going to be really long going off the canvas, then um, that's going to be a lot of weight on the back of their head. So we want to spread out that weight so it's about you know, like that if we're just doing simple horns. We're going to draw out the circles for where her ears are going to go as well. I make them touch the horns. doorbell just rang. I'm not going to answer it though. And now we have some nice big ears for our gemstone. I'm going to erase some of these lines that are in the way. Because we don't want stuff to be in my way. Because if you get in gemstone's way, she will kill you. <laughs> don't get in gemstone's way. And everybody. I'm writing a book about gemstone, by the way, for some context. Um, I'll probably post more videos about the book that I'm writing about her much, much later, since my author that I am writing with currently is getting a lot of schoolwork. I am too, but I've been working on our book in the meantime, but it'll be a long, long time until it's published, so. <laughs> Alright, those ears are looking a little bit wonky. We kind of got this kind of thing going on, which we don't like. She looks like a rabbit. It's kind of cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn these inward a bit. Just to kind of make her exceedingly happy. Just, oh, didn't realize that I was not on the lasso tool. There we go. I want to erase this because we're going to put in some horns anyway. I think I'm going to use my liquify tool. Push this in a little bit. Those are all those are ear muscles, by the way. She has very expressive and rotationable ears. Um <laughs> now we're gonna draw her horns. She has three horns on each side technically. There's this tiny one, there's this bigger one, and then there is the main one. I'm gonna make it like that. Then we can have that up there. Those are supposed to be connected, so I'm going to just erase this a little bit. Just to kind of show that. And Gemstone also has um, something that I kind of stole from Wings of Fire. I really like the how the rain wings had the frills. Gemstone also lives in a relatively cold environment, so we've got to put her in cold environment. So I had made her some feathery frills instead of just skin. Gemstone also has a bit of fur, not much, she's mostly scales because she is a dragon. I had to stick with that. My co-author would not let me make her be floofy, which I'm still kind of sad about.
right now I'm just kind of doing some messy feathers. I think she's still looking a bit too chubby and chunky. She doesn't quite look like a dragon. I know that because she isn't technically supposed to look like a dragon. She just is called one because I said so. That's kind of the fun thing about being, being the artist is you can just say so and it is. I like having that control. I could draw a circle, like a, just a blob, and call that a tissue box. I could say that that is a tissue box, and it is, because I said so. Even if you might not see it that way, I said it was a tissue box, and therefore it is a tissue box. It's beautiful, it was a beautiful tissue box as well. How about we look at, we put in a past drawing that I have of gemstone facing forward as a reference. Because I kind of need a reference back to my own art because this just isn't looking quite right. I'm just going to make that a bit smaller. This is some pretty old art that I have of her. Well, I guess it's not, it's relatively new, but I have an extremely old picture of her that is in this exact same position because this was a redraw. Something I'm seeing that I did differently is that she's got a lot longer this way than in this one. Just looks too chunky. Gemstone isn't chunky. She doesn't eat enough food. Just like me. I don't eat. I guess I am technically gemstone. But you know. my notifications turned on so I'm gonna get a bunch of these little notifications just don't worry about those they're not Gemstone also has a scar. I will not spoil my book. I will not say where her scar came from yet. I'll just say that she has one. <laughs> Another thing that I actually used to do a lot was I would go into the wrench tool, go to canvas, and I would do drawing guide. 
add the drawing guide and put it to symmetry. And I would have that be assisted and then on each side I draw, it draws the exact same thing. So then I did not have to worry about having, turn off that. Ah, I don't know how to fix it. Oh no. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little panicked there. And that can kind of help you try to figure stuff out and only have to draw one side of the face. That's how I learned, but then you have to get out of that habit because otherwise it just looks way too symmetrical. I know that gemstone's look, looking pretty symmetrical, right? Don't know if that's a compliment or not, but you know. Gemstone also has some spines. We can start doing some spines. There. Something that you can never forget ever is to create make your drawings a little more lively i usually do that by adding highlights oh my cat is looking very scary now let's change that there we go I honestly like adding highlights. I think they add a lot more life to the drawing, as I said earlier. They just make it look like it has more of an atmosphere. Jim's looking a bit funky. We can change that. We don't want her looking too funky. For gemstone, I always have a little dot in the center of her pupil. This is a design element that I have in all of my dragon drawings that are from my book. So that's what you're seeing there. It's actually very important in the book. Just that little detail can be really important. Usually I'm able to get the, I'm in the right spot the first try. Not this time though, it's okay. You don't always have to get it right on the first try. So that's mostly my, my tutorial. I think quickly I'm going to show how I would draw a sharper dragon rather than something soft and a lot more cat-like. So to draw a more sharp dragon, I'm just gonna I do diamond. I do this diamond and then I can add nostrils. Make us a little bit more curved. Spines. Get some eyes to get angry. Angry. Angry, Maybe I do something like that. It's very... I'm now realizing how com utterly stylized my artwork is. I, I like it though. I like where I'm going. I could make a very cranky dragon.
very, very quick sketch here. I really don't like how the sketch looks, but you know, that's okay. There. This kind of how I would draw a more sharp dragon, but of course, I put a lot more effort into it. And now I think I'm going to quickly finish up these sketches and I will meet you back at the end. I hope that this was helpful. And yeah, enjoy my speed paint. Anyways, I wish you enjoyed the enjoyed the video. I know it was a bit long. Sorry that my voice changed a bit. I am a little sick right now. But, and sorry that this took so long to make. It took a really long time to edit. And I know I didn't really get much editing done. It's got such a long video. And if you drew along, I would love to see what you drew. If you have a YouTube channel, you can at me. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you in my next video.